Check this out, you guys. I am standing in the middle of Anza Borrego Desert Super Bloom 2019 in Southern California. This is just blowing up with wildflowers. I'm gonna show you guys some of the different flowers that are just going nuts right now. Shall we? We shall. So we were driving, had to slam on the brakes for this ridiculously show-stopping field of yellow. This is a desert dandelion. It is absolutely breathtaking. And then you have this whole field with the mountains behind it. And those little caterpillars love these flowers too. I've been seeing them all over. It's so cool. So we just hooked up with the super cool folks at the Ocotillo Wells Discovery Center. They are gonna take us back to a really cool spot where we are going to look at wildflowers, talk about them, get some information. So we're gonna follow them down this uh, really cool dirt road. And by the way, if you guys have a four wheel drive vehicle, bring it, you're gonna need it to get to those really cool spots. All right, guys, we are here with the wonderful and gracious Sahar. Did I say that right? Close enough. Oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> sorry. She said it was close enough, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. She's been gracious enough to uh, take us back into this cool little area. It's kind of a, a little canyon and there's uh, just a ton of flowers going off and we are very, very close to the Akatia Wells Discovery Center. Tell us a little bit about like what you guys do at the Discovery Center. So our Discovery Center is our main point of contact for folks that are coming into Akatia Wells. So if you have a question about where to go, what to do, what safety equipment you need, if you need a map, anything like that, we're kind of the first place we recommend stopping by when you're coming to Akatia Wells for information about the entire park. Cool, okay, and then literally next door neighbors to Anza Borrego, right? Yes, they're our sister park. Okay, okay, awesome. This year, 2019 Super Bloom is just like out of control nuts. Can we expect to see the same thing in the future years? We do have what we call super blooms. This is kind of a new term as of 2017. Right, okay. Now in our south end of the desert where it's very dry, that's usually an event that only happens about maybe once a decade at most. Wow, so we totally just lucked out. Absolutely. This amount of greenery and this many flowers is very, very, very unusual. So one of the things I heard is actually that buried in the sand was viable seeds from like even as much as a decade ago that have just been kind of like waiting for the right circumstances, the right rainfall and all that to, to blow up. Is that correct? That's true. Wow, Our okay. seeds have what we call inhibitors in their shells, which are essentially a poison that doesn't allow the plant to grow until it's soaked in enough water that that poisonous inhibitor is washed away. So we're witnessing this like amazing floral resurrection right now. Yeah, and it's something that would have been decades in the making. That's crazy. Okay, so if you're coming in as a visitor, where do you even start? So we have 80,000 acres, and then Anza Borrego, our sixth sister park, has about 800,000. Wow. So your best bet is to start off with either the Anza Borrego Visitor Center or the Akatia Wells Discovery Center, depending on where you're going and where you are. Well, you guys are cool, so I would start with you guys first. <laughs> All right, name some of these plants that are going nuts right now off the top of your head. Well, so these are really cool, these little guys right down here. Let's see. Let's this see. is called Ground-Eyed Primrose. And in the early season, we get huge fields of these. People that come to the desert really recognize this because of the big, fat, black and green caterpillars that love them. As you go north towards the park, you will see acres of verbena. Doesn't need too much water compared to our other desert flowers to bloom, but it needs a lot of heat, it needs a lot of sunlight. All our desert flowers are growing in a place where they're overcoming some really impossible odds to create a really special beauty. And I think that's what really draws our visitors to come by the thousands to these small little sleepy desert towns and to see these wonderful resources because I think people instinctively understand how special and unique this is. I encourage people to come out, enjoy our bloom, but also treat it with a lot of love and care 
as the yeah. delicate treasure that it really is. Wow, that's that's a monologue right there. <laughs> Heck yeah, I like it. Awesome. Well, there you have it. I think we're gonna set up a, a campsite somewhere. Any spot that you recommend that we can throw a tent up? If you wanna be close to the flowers, you can camp in places like Coyote Canyon. Fantastic info. You guys are just awesome. And you have probably the best job in the world. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to head back to the truck. We're gonna do some off-roading. All right, Let's bye. do it. So we got the tent all set up. This spot is awesome. As the sun is just kind of setting behind the mountains right there, the Ocotillos are just like towering and creating a, a really cool silhouette against the skyline. This place is amazing. In this area, definitely the most prominent flower is the desert dandelion. That's the, just the sea of yellow that we see out there right now. The camera is not really capturing all that our eyes are seeing right here. And then you have these little pops of uh, the other colors in between. You have some purples and whites. And the cool thing is too, is it's not just the flowers that's going nuts. It's all the, the creatures, the wildlife. You think of the desert as this barren landscape, but uh, it's now just become an oasis. It's definitely been a fun time. And let me know if you guys have been here. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe because the next video I'm hoping will be just as cool. Thank you guys. In the meantime, happy planting as always.